Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Laser Beam Live, episode number 29, 28, I think 29. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. 29. Welcome to Laser Beam, Laser Beam Live, episode number 29. My name is Ikeno Ofoha for CNC Labs, and you know the drill. Whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. We are streaming from my house. We are streaming from my home. I recently moved in. I have a very, uh, I have a lot of space. And I also have off camera a metal rack that will be housing an enclosed 12 by 30 long mill. Uh, and we will be exhausting it so that we can run the laser beam lives from my background or from my home and uh, make things a little bit easier. And also uh, my setup will stay the same every single time and it'll just be easier to kind of continue on from different projects and, and that type of stuff. So, who's in the chat? <laughs> no, it's not a Zoom background, it's a real background. If my dog wakes up, you'll probably see him running around in the back. Uh, his name is Zeus. Dana, thank you for uh, being the official earliest person in the live, I think with nine hours. Uh, he won't be in the chat today. I think he won't be able to attend, but he will see us in a couple of weeks. So that is awesome. Uh, Jack in the shop, you already know he is our resident laser demon. Uh, Bill, how you doing? Jim, thanks for joining us. Nicholas, thanks for coming back. Dieter, love to see you here. Uh, yeah. So how are you guys doing? How are you guys in the chat doing? How are you guys hanging? Is this a bit disorienting for you guys because it's a different background? I know we did 28 laser beam lives in that same uh, shop. And uh, yeah, because we do these things in the evening where I am, I think it's just a little bit easier now that I have the space and now that I can actually take a, a, a long mill home with a laser, um, it'll just be easier to run it from home. And I like my little setup I got here. It's, uh, it never has to move, it can always just stay here and I can always just come to my computer, set things up real quick and click on stream and I am ready to go. So uh, I like it. Let me know if you guys think it's a little bit uh, disorienting to see me in this, uh, according to Nicholas, the fake Zoom background. <laughs> it's very real, guys. It's very real. You can see the little, the, the metal rack right here. You guys hear that? That's the, you know, six foot long, you know, eight, eight feet, seven feet tall, six feet tall. I don't know how tall it is, but it, it is big. Got it from work. And uh, yeah, so we can just bring the long mill a little bit closer to home so that I'm kind of operating more like how you guys would be. I got my computer, I got my long mill. This little area is kind of like my little work, my little office. So now I am more in line with you, the customer, you, the supporters, and how you guys use your machines. And just like you guys, now I have to find a way because I'm no longer in a garage. So we won't be running the long mill with the laser today. Uh, we'll get that set up for hopefully for the next stream. If not, the one after that, that everything should be set up by then. Um, so yeah, now I have to find um, kind of cool ways to exhaust stuff and like lower the amount of sound that it makes, so sound dampening and all that fun stuff. So I'm kind of in a very similar boat to some of you who don't have like a big workshop or who want to move your workshop or maybe you work in the basement and you guys, you guys had to kind of figure out all this out uh, earlier. So I'm, I'm joining the club now. So. <laughs> So what are we working on today? Today we're going to be uh, we're going to start designing an enclosure for the 12 by 30 long mill. So this enclosure is primarily going to be for laser use because I am a laser user. I don't use the router that often. Um, so I am designing this enclosure with laser in mind. Uh, and obviously I can always run the uh, the long mill with the router, but I would probably just add an extra hose so I can run the dust shoe into the vacuum. Um, so if you guys want to kind of take my lead or take my design or kind of just see how I would go about designing a little enclosure, you guys can kind of take the ideas from there and then maybe even translate that if you're a, more of a router user or you need to add an extra hose for the router a hose and the exhaust hose for the laser and the smoke, then all you got to do is kind of make those little adjustments. So yeah, Bill from Alaska. Alan, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you so much, Jack in the shop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me go over here. So maybe you guys have caught me in a design stream before, but when I design, I like to use Fusion 360 and I like to caveat all my design work with I 
am a not the greatest designer. I can make just about anything work, but it might not end up the prettiest way. It might not end up the perfect way, but this is just going to be a one iteration. Again, we're going to be at the Hamilton Woodworking Show next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is what kind of, obviously I want to be taking the long mill home and exhaust it out the window, but also we need an enclosure so that we'll be able to run the laser at the trade show. So that's kind of my deadline. So by next Thursday, I want to have this thing built. So today we are kind of going into the rough, the rough uh, kind of basic um, design. And then we will start adding things from there. And then hopefully the next live stream, I can show you the uh, completed uh, enclosure and we can kind of anytime I adjust things I can let you guys know what I'm adjusting and what worked really well and what didn't work very well um, so that you guys can you know hopefully it's just at least interesting content even if you you have your own 10 out of 10 enclosure at least you guys get to see kind of my process uh, when I'm thinking about enclosures so first I kind of just want to design out the basic structure of the box then I will start to kind of place like where I want holes and things like that. And then I'll probably design little 3D printed brackets to keep everything sturdy. Um, I'm going to be designing this with a half inch MDF in mind because it's just a easy material to work with. It's not too expensive. I can get a pretty large sheet and probably could get away with either one uh, four foot by four foot, or probably two four foot by four foot sheets. We'll see after the dimensions are made. Um, so yeah, I kind of measured out what my current, um, the current size of my long mill is that at the shop at the office and I kind of have rough dimensions and I added some buffer on every side so that I could add, attach brackets and everything. And then we'll kind of just go from there. So let's just build a simple box and go from there. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good to me. Okay. So I'm probably just going to want to start with the base. It's going to be half an inch, but we're going to do this in two dimensions first. So, uh, the length, is around 50 inches, but probably gonna want to make, want to make it around 56 so I can add some brackets to mount things um, because I'm just gonna sit my long mill on top of this. I wanna be able to open it up and slide the long mill in. Because it's just a laser, I don't really need it to be uh, fixed to the base, but if I ever did wanna do router jobs, I could easily fix it with um, some particle board screws or some wood screws, uh, like the ones that come in your long mill kit. So we're going to be using around 1,422 millimeters. Oh, let's do that on the other side, actually. So we'll start with the width, I guess. Um, so the width, we want about 30 inches, which is going to be 762 millimeters, 762. And then we want uh, about 56 inches on the length, so 1,422 millimeters. And that's going to be kind of the size of our base. So that's our first... That's kind of like the first piece that we're working with. And I'm just going to extrude it just so as we build, we kind of get, um, we, can, we can kind of visualize what we're actually building and build off of piece by piece. So it's going to be half an inch thick. So as you can see, we got a nice little base. This is roughly the size of the long mill, the the MDF baseboard that it's currently sitting on, plus the, the motor overhang, plus a little bit of room if I want to have uh, the surge protector inside. I probably want to keep the surge protector outside and route all the wires uh, through the back of the box just so I don't end up having to do a lot of cleaning because anything you're going to keep inside of this uh, will need to be cleaned because smoke is dirty. I don't know if you've ever cleaned your lens after using it for a while, but that smoke and that particulate and that heat, it, it does tend to like grime things up. So this is going to be hopefully the, we're exhausting very quickly, but over time you will have to clean all your things. So that's the, the one thing. Um, so we have a base and we kind of want our pieces to sit on the edges. So I essentially, I could go back to my original sketch and I can create a little side sketch here that is actually, I would want it at least half an inch longer. So the, also the back piece can sit on it, uh, can sit on the back. So make that 12.7. And then uh, we'll make that 
12.7. So half an inch, half an inch. And then the actual usable length, we're just gonna bring it all there. So just keep in mind, we did lose uh, half or half a inch in length there, but that's why we added to it. So we wanna make sure it's squared and we lock that in. And there we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this is essentially, uh, when I go to like Home Depot and I'm grabbing the MDF foam, like pieces, I might as well, if I have these dimensions already set out, then I can just get a cut there and make it super easy. I don't have to, you know, figure out table saw or whatever saw situation in my shop. I can kind of just get all these rough pieces in. And then obviously, if I need to adjust things, uh, when I'm cutting out the, the holes for the the four inch inline fan that I'm going to be using or the wires, I'll probably just end up using the router and then I'll be 3D printing brackets, very similar to like our, um, the feet on the long mill, uh, but I'll be making like 90 degree brackets so that everything is supported. And then right off the bat, like to put everything together, I think I'm, I'm going to use a nail gun, uh, wood, wood glue, first wood glue on everything, clamp it, then a nail gun, then once that cures and everything, I'm gonna seal it with like a silicone, right? Because I just want to uh, make sure that the air is actually being exhausted, which means we want to get as close to an airtight fit. And then if we need um, airflow coming in, then we can just use the router and actually have a little vent that uh, can allow air to come in, creating that airflow so that we have more powerful, uh, we have a more powerful system exhausting the air, right? The particulate and the smoke. So that's kind of our two sides there. And then our last side is just going to be across here. And then we're gonna extrude everything separately so that we can kind of name our pieces and keep everything very separate. Just in case we need to make changes, we can just come back to this original drawing and kind of go from there. So I'm going to right now hide this body I'm just gonna put this uh, base and then I'm going to bring out the sketch, hide that. And we're gonna just one by one, we're, first we're gonna extrude this. And for our height, it's going to be 24 inches, but we're gonna add the extra half inch that we lost. So it's going to be 622.7 millimeters. So 622.7 millimeters. And we want it to be a new body so that we can kind of name everything. Um, so from the front, that is going to be the left side. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And just, I have a bad memory, so uh, 622.7. So we're going to replicate that here. So 622.7. And we got our sides here. We have our base. And last but not least, I'm just going to name this. Right, and then last but not least, we want our back. And I want my cabinet to sit flush on the top. And I want my, like, I want uh, what we're opening, our cabinet lid is going to be the top and the front. So we're gonna attach those two on a piano hinge. And then we're gonna get some like actuators, some like um, spring loaded actuators so that it's not just slamming down and it can be held up uh, by those things and that's gonna be on the inside and the piano switch is gonna be like outside slash inside Hopefully we get a little bit farther so you guys can kind of explain that so essentially I want to go um, So instead of adding half an inch here, we're gonna uh, leave the half an inch that we're losing So that it doesn't it lines up half an inch lower here 
right? So that when it falls, it's sitting flush of the whole top is sitting flush. This won't be higher than our top piece there. So that's just going to be 610. So this is what I was talking about here. And we don't want to join anything yet because these are all going to be individual pieces that we're manually going to um, attach with wood glue, nails, brackets, and silicone to make sure everything is airtight. So that looks good. So that's pretty simple. So let's uh, bring our base back. So this is what the enclosure is roughly going to look like. Pretty simple, pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, just gonna be half an inch MDF. We're gonna use some, a nail gun so that we can quickly kind of pop these in, or we can just, you know, pre-screw, pre-drill holes for like wood, wood screws, you know. So now we need to attach, uh, now we need to model the top and the front. After this, we are going to cut out holes for our acrylic. So I'll be using the same acrylic that we use for our, um, so I'll be using the same acrylic that we use for our uh, air assist slash shield because that is the same uh, that is the same color as your safety glasses and it's, it will protect anybody who's walking by our booth or me uh, while I'm streaming. Um, I can just close the lid and I won't really need to have my glasses on. So I'll be double painting it just to ensure that we're getting uh, as much, um, just to make sure that we're getting as much like uh, protection as we would with the safety glasses. So the safety glasses are rated for, I believe, seven OD seven plus and our acrylic for the, for the air assist shield is rated at OD3+. Plus. So we're going to be double painting it so that we have twice the amount of protection. Um, and we'll be just as close to our safety glasses. Uh, the, the, the OD7 plus is a little bit of overkill. Uh, but, you know, this will theoretically in, pract like in uh, theory make uh, OD6+. Plus. Unfortunately, I won't. Unfortunately, I won't. Um, that's just going to be a situation that I'm going to have to deal with myself. Uh, whether that's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Jack, I haven't even thought of that. I'm going to be very honest. I didn't even think of that, but that is a good thing to think about. Um, I think, honestly, I'll just turn off my heat while I'm running it and um, let it just exhaust air, and then I'll turn it back on after and deal with that later. Uh, but good thing to think about. Thanks for bringing it up. Uh, we will be just the, like, it's going to have to be pulling air from somewhere, which is going to be here. And essentially in the winter, my warm air that I'm heating and I'm paying to have this place heated is going to be, uh, kind of exhausted out with the particulate because we're going to have, uh, an inlet to draw in air into the cabinet, right? So that's something I'll have to think about, but for now, uh, I'll kind of have to deal with that a little bit later. So I'm going to do a sketch here. And I'm going to 12.7. I'm going to kind of just sketch this out. And we will do the top piece. And then we'll extrude that forward and now what we don't want is uh we will extrude like the length of this board minus a half an inch right so 
I delete that. So this board is sitting at uh, 762, and we lose a half an inch here because we're extruding from behind here. But we want that loss because we want the front cabinet piece to essentially line up with this. So 762, oh, it's gonna be, this is gonna be a negative 762. Right, so you guys see that? We are going to do a new body. We want everything to be separate. And then finally, I think I'll just uh, do the sketch on our original sketch at the bottom. So let me just label this. So this is the back. This is the top. And then I'm going to Let's get rid of the bottom, the base, and then let's edit this first sketch. So let's add that half an inch. And then let's go across. Let's make sure it's squared. And then we can finish our sketch here. So I'll select that, finish our sketch. And now when I'm extruding this, I have to skip over. So I have to um, offset it by 12 point. 12.7 millimeters. 12.7. And then our distance is going to be the height so this height is um, 610 and then we're skipping over this with the offset. So 610 should get us perfect. And again, we don't want to join anything. New body. Okay, so we have our front. So now we have our box. That was pretty simple, right? Not too difficult. We have our little box. Now comes the harder part, because now we need to figure out uh, how we want everything to work. So I think at first, let's worry about the structural stuff, right? So we want this, this is essentially the structure that we want to be strong because the lid, the other two pieces are gonna be connected uh, and you're going to be on hinges. So first we want to worry about these pieces. So I essentially want to design a little like a little corner bracket, like a 90 degree bracket that we can 3D print that will help, first of all, line things up, but also will help kind of keep this thing structurally sound. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch on this piece. And I can kind of, I can project this and this just so I can see it for reference. See the lines turn purple. And what I'm going to do is we got to come up with a length, um, let's say two inches, or just for ease of 
metric, let's say 50 millimeters. Do 50 millimeters this way. Fifty millimeters this way. And then you can add that. And now we want to think about how do we want this thing to be designed? Because we can make it solid. And then we can just put holes through it, right? For the wood screws or for whatever screws that we want to use. But we also kind of want to save time with our prints. So I'm just going to make some lines so I can kind of figure out how I want this to be. So let's say Twenty millimeters in. And let's say twenty millimeters in here. Okay, so that's the kind of material that we probably want to be pretty rigid so that the wood screw is being uh, securely mounted there. So we want a wood screw to go in this direction and then in this direction probably somewhere in the middle here, around 10 millimeters. Um, and then the rest, we kind of want to make a profile so that we can save on some space here. So, we'll start with this corner halfway through here. And then we'll kind of make that our arbitrary distance here. So we have about five millimeter distance here. And then I'll just start making right angles. And then from here, probably want like five. And so I might end up changing this later. So we want this to be 90. There we go. I want the function to snap. Makes it easier to find 90 degrees. I could just add another five millimeter. Little five millimeter line coming from this way. And just connect the two. And then lastly, just to complete our little box okay actually we'll need some distance here so I will go five millimeters off of here and I know this might look a little messy but we're just making the profile of a piece that we can use essentially across our entire material here Anytime we want to strengthen the bond between Okay, so now I'm going to start like trimming So we really only need to make this part once and then we can kind of extrude it and that will essentially be our little piece uh, that we're using to secure things. So I want to get rid of everything but that box because that's the only part that we're not, everything else is going to get extruded. Kind of very similar to our long mill feet. 
where we used the stronger plastic of of a 3D printed material, PLA. Uh, we try to save time on the printing. And what do we want this? Maybe 15 millimeters. I think that should be all right. Oh, I do not. I want to make sure that's not joined. I want to make that a separate new body so that we can move it. So, oh, I did forget. We want to create enough space for a bead of silicone. So when we seal the edges here, there's going to be some silicone here in the corner that will stop anything from connecting like very like uh, very firmly to the corner. And we don't want to run into any issues where it's trying to break down the silicone seal. So we just kind of want to add a little, a little box here so that we can kind of skip over the seal. And I don't think it needs to be that big. Uh, because once we wipe it down with a corner, like so if you ever did any like bathroom work or waterproofing work, you know, lay down the silicone, use like a uh, piece of plastic or wood that has a nice corner and you just scrape it across. So that kind of, you push it into the corner and it kind of seals pretty with a small profile. So I don't think I need that much space, but I'm just freestyling this. So let's say 1.5 millimeters. by 1.5 and then across here okay so this can be our ah that looks kind of small I'm not gonna lie we don't need that much space but I don't want to run into an issue where we don't have enough space So uh, this base is stopping me from, I'm just gonna change that to two millimeters, two millimeters. And now we can kind of extrude this out. Or actually we already extruded it. So we just need to finish this sketch and change our extrude selection. There we go. So now we have these brackets that we can use kind of across and we can, I'll, I can make some holes later um, when I choose a size of screw. We'll just call it bracket one. And I'm going to try to move this because we don't want it in the corner this way. So we move it about 150 millimeters this way. And there we go. We have a bracket and we're essentially, we were, I'm not going to do this over and over again because it's going to get repetitive maybe uh, later, but we essentially want this one here, one here. We want to turn it and put one here, maybe two here. So two, four, six, eight on these side. And then when we're putting together this top and front, we'll probably want to add one here and here. So now we have like three points of, uh, of essentially contact that that's keeping everything together. We have the wood glue, we have the nails, and now we have these little uh, nine degree brackets. So we have, we want to make sure that this thing is really sturdy and you're not going to 
try to pick this thing up while moving and your long mill is just going to drop out the bottom or something weird is going to happen. Although you obviously want to be careful, uh, you might like, but we don't want to be too careful. We do want to build this thing once. And of course, you know, things can change later, but we only really want to build this, have to build this thing once. So there's four on this side, four on this side, and then two for the other bracket. This is going to be a hinge. And that should be good. Uh, the only thing that we have to worry about because we're setting this thing on the inside is that we're going to have to make sure that the length of these pieces um, are pretty on point. So now we want to uh, create the, the openings for the windows because this is going to be made for a trade show. I think the more windows, the better. Kind of want to capture the attention from all sides. So we'll start with the front and our acrylic for this, uh, this orange acrylic that can block out uh, the wavelength is 32 inches by 24 inches or 813 millimeters by 610 millimeters. So that is the max we can make this. And of course, we don't even have the height. I don't believe we have the height for that. Uh, 610. Yeah, so theoretically, we could just slap it on, but you know, we can create a little bit of a border there. So I'm going to start a sketch here and we're going to find the middle point should auto kind of lock to the middle. So there we go. I'm going to find the middle. And in terms of length, we can go as far as 813 millimeters. So I kind of want to have as much length as possible. Uh, I do believe that the MDF is going to be sturdy enough that, that, you know, cutting out that big of a hole is not going to really compromise things. So that should be 406.5. So 406. And obviously, if it looks weird, we can always change this. 406.5, and then the same thing on the other end. So this is something that we'll probably end up getting uh, cut out through with the, with the long mill router. Like, we'll use like our 30 by 30 or our um, 48 by 30. To actually cut out the window obviously you can drill holes and use a handsaw you can you can use a router you can use a handheld router but you know we make long mills so might as well use the long mill so these parts will actually just get uh, exported probably into vetric and then actually will create the g code and uh, route out these things so stuff for the the four inch inlet fan and things like that that stuff will get routed out routed out and then other than this we kind of just only need um, some piano hinges some brackets for the for the lid, and then I'll probably 3D print a handle for the lid. And then uh, for the acrylic, after we cut the holes out, I'll probably have, uh, I'll laser cut some screw holes. And then around the screw holes, we'll have um, silicone to seal the acrylic. So not only will the pressure of the hardware be keeping things in line, but also uh, the silicone around the edges will keep things airtight. So we kind of want to, how long do we want it? What type of border do we want around? We know that's the maximum length we can have. So now um, in terms of height, what do we want to be working with? If we wanted to, we can make it top to ceiling, but then uh, we kind of need something to actually mount it to. So um, just like how much space do we really want from the top and the bottom? So we have about 610, um, probably, probably do 50 millimeters off the top because then that allows us to use our current CO2 laser cutter to cut this acrylic to size and make sure that everything is hunky-dory. Um, so I want to do 50 millimeters from the top, 50 millimeters from the bottom. And that's going to kind of be our height there. 
So I'm just gonna use this as a just like a ruler. Gonna kind of let that snap to its length. I'm going to create this and then I can do the same thing on the other side. So kind of use this as a ruler, let it snap to the length. Same thing on this side. And then close it up, make sure all the, and then I'll just get rid of this just to make this visually easier. and create the one line. Um, Jim, are you asking about um, 3D router files? Because uh, yes, I think in-house we, most of us use Vetric when we're creating stuff. Um, for laser, I use Lightburn. Uh, for 3D modeling, I use um, Fusion 360. So I'll export these as like 3D files, whatever Vetric can take. Um, and then, so to, to, in order to cut out this window, we'll just put this in Vetric. I'll like export this file, put this in Vetric, choose our bit size, use a touch plate, uh, choose a bit, and then we'll essentially just route out these corners. Uh, probably make the corners rounded just for to make that easier. And then the acrylic, we'll put in our CO2 laser cutter, the ones we use for uh, in-house manufacturing. And we'll essentially, what we'll do is we'll essentially just um, cut out the acrylic a little bit longer and add hardware holes, right? So we have about 20 inches in our, our long mill. So I do kind of want to add an extra like maybe two inches. Um, so we might have to make this a little bit smaller. So let's say 75, right? And let's say this is 75. Uh, just so we can fit it nicely in our laser cutter. And then let me just add a driven length to this. So right now it's 510 uh, minus 75. So it's gonna be 435. And then probably just want to, probably just wanna, Snap that there. So I think that will actually be a better size. It'll be more manageable in the laser cutter and everything. And then, uh, then our hardware will be able to mount here, like on the backside, probably use like some M3s, M5s, doesn't really matter. Um, and then we can kind of seal the holes. Like before we screw in the hardware, we'll probably lay down some silicone so that that disperses it and kind of seals it up. So even the holes for the hardware will be airtight or as airtight as we can make it uh, without going too overboard. Because it doesn't need to be perfect. As long as there's flow coming in, as long as there's a powerful enough inline fan coming out, uh, we should be able to create like a decent enough seal and airflow enough to exhaust most of this out uh, to make it very, very reasonable to the point where at least if I were to run it in here, uh, I'm not going to set off my fire alarms. That's kind of like, like the, <laughs> that's kind of like the, uh, the bare minimum here. So obviously if it's not enough, we can obviously, I can obviously work on, um, making it more airtight, right? Like I could, I could add ridges here with some wood. I could bolt on some ridges here aligned with the edge of where everything is going to sit. And then I can add like a, a little pad, uh, some insulation, like stuff that you use for windows or car uh, windows and stuff like that. And I could add some extra insulation so that when the lid close, it's like, it's like pushing in on some, uh, some rubber insulation to create an even better seal. 
right? But uh, we'll start with the box and then kind of go from there. As long as the box works, as long as it's uh, all the spacing is good, then I think we could figure out the rest. So the front, I'm just going to extrude this and then pull it to the back here. So now we have a little viewing window. And now essentially I'm going to do the same thing on the top. That's fair, Jack. That's pretty fair. Um, do, would you keep that opinion even if you have like a, a, a grill, like uh, opening uh, with like a, a grill that lets air in, right? Because we're not trying to seal everything. We just want it to be uh, weak. I kind of want to decide where the air is being let in. But I'm going to take your guys' opinion. This is my first enclosure that I've ever been making. I've only ran uh, the long mill and the laser in open aired or shops where I could open garages and windows and stuff like that. So I didn't really, I don't ever need to exhaust like that, but uh, it'll be good to know for anybody at home or who doesn't have that setup who wants to, to, to replicate this kind of um, use case. So um, like I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm thinking like having like maybe like I'll 3D print a, I'll 3D print a small grill here and obviously I'll seal the corners and I'll 3D print a small grill here. Uh, I'll probably start with one and then see if that's enough. And then if it's not enough, then I can do uh, mirror it on the other side. So that at least we're, yeah, uh, we're deciding where the air is being inlet, right? So we can put it on the front here. Let's say the laser's running closer to the front here. And then we have our exhaust here. So the air is passing, pushing the smoke backwards and the, our inline fan is exhausting out the back. So probably have to probably once I decide where I want this outlet, probably make a coupler, 3D printed coupler, so that I can make sure that the inline fan presses fit into it. Uh, usually, like people like to put the inline fan or your exhaust fan on the inside, so there's less leakage. But for me, I'm going to be making a coupler. I'm going to make sure to seal it with silicone, and then I'm going to make sure that it's press fit to the inline fan to make sure that. Um, we're not losing any of that airflow or that um, we're not losing, uh, we're not getting any like a uh, spill and anywhere that we need to mount stuff. So handles, acrylic viewing window. So I'll probably put an acrylic, the same uh, size viewing window at the top. And then I'll make ones for the side so that no matter where you see us at the trade show, you'll be able to see it. And then same thing here, I'll be able to see it from front, top and side. And, you know, uh, I think that'll be great. So we kind of have a structure for our box, initial box. We kind of have, we have our bracket that we're going to finish up and then get 3D printed. Yeah, so I think we'll be sealing it with like some paint, some, some, uh, some paint that will help seal everything in. And also I just don't like the color of MDF. So I was gonna paint it anyways, but we'll make sure to, that uh, the paint that we use kind of seals things up. So what still needs to be designed? So obviously we'll, we'll need like 12 to 16 of these brackets. That's fine. Uh, we'll need three more viewing windows, but at least we got this one out the way. Um, we'll need holes for the uh, air that's coming in. Then we'll need a hole for the, the fan that's blow, uh, exhausting the smoke out. Then we'll need to design a little 3D printed coupler so that things can re remain pretty airtight with the fan on the outside. Then we'll decide, uh, we'll do one hole for uh, any wires that needs to come out. And then we can either seal that with um, some gossets um, or I could just seal it up with silicone, All right? Other than that, I think that's just about it. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream pretty soon. You guys kind of know my plans and you guys got to see me kind of start the design here. And then 
I'm going to continue the design here. So on my next stream, uh, I'll be able to show you the real thing, but also show you the completed design. So you can kind of see how I completed this and also see how it turned out in real life and then see if I had to make any like big changes. Um, and like Jack might be right. Even like, a, I, like I might get it wrong with like, oh, uh, because I made it so airtight, it, the small grills or the, the grill size that we choose might not be big enough to allow enough air so that the airflow is not that good. And if I make any mistakes like that, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to let you guys know and I'll show you what I change because I can't really run it in my, um, in my home until it is like perfect. So I'm going to be building it. I'm going to be designing tomorrow and hopefully have a design that's ready to go for Monday. And then I'll head over to Home Depot, buy everything I need. We'll do a first build. And then, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be buying things that add on to it. We'll be for the trade show. We'll be using like a pre filter and a carbon filter to make sure that everything's safe because uh, we will be it is a large space, but it is technically indoors. So we want to make sure that all, everything is being exhausted properly. So we'll kind of build up the rough shape on Monday. Uh, and then we'll, I'll tweak it until it's like very, very optimal uh, for the trade show on Friday. So guys, thank you for watching me just design a box. I never thought that I would have people watching me design a box. <laughs> so I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, before I go, do you guys have any questions? Oh, I can talk about the CO2 laser. Let's talk about the CO2 laser. So Bill, thank you so much for the reminder. Please go hit the like button. We appreciate it. If you have a friend who's into, <laughs> Jack, it is a nice box. If you have a friend that's into CNC's lasers, share our channel with them. If they love lasers, share this live stream with them. They can catch the next one, or you can catch it on the live tab of our YouTube channel, CNC Labs, uh, and you can catch all of our old laser beam lives. So if you are coming here looking for more of a light burn, laser demo, uh, all that stuff, we have plenty of those in the backlog. Uh, the live tab of our CNC Labs YouTube channel that you can watch and get some good knowledge. Um, do you guys have any questions before I update you guys on the CO2 laser and all that fun stuff? No questions? Jim, thank you. Thank you. You have a good night as well. Any questions? Okay, let me give you guys a quick update on the CO2 laser project. So right now we are working on uh, we are working on a survey that we can send to you guys and other CNC laser enthusiast communities out there because not only do we want to build a product that's going to be great for you guys, our current customers, we want to build a product that can be adopted and can actually help grow the community uh, in terms of CNC Labs lasers. So we're currently working on that. We're going through a few rough drafts. We're making sure that we're getting all the information that we need and we're asking questions in a particular order, a particular way that allows you to give us the most amount of information because we don't want to send you a bunch of surveys. We want to have one survey that kind of tells us everything that we need to know in order to start designing the physical prototype uh, and start going from there. Um, I'm going to be either posting update videos and stuff like that very soon once we have once we make a little bit more progress, probably once we get uh, the email list uh, out. So that survey is going to come to the main CNC Labs email list. So sign up on our website, cnclabs.com. Uh, sign up for our email list so that you can get the announcement. And then you can join the CO2 laser list. So we know that we're not uh, bombarding people who don't want to know about the CO2 laser with the CO2 laser. So this hopefully this will be like, like one of very few times that we hit everybody on the main email list uh, with an email to sign up to add to the uh, to, to complete the survey so that we can get your results. Uh, and then we will also give you the new list so that you can sign up and then you guys can get all the main updates. So hopefully we'll be posting updates, video updates, myself and uh, Daniel, our engine, our main engineer, you might, you'll remember him from the Vortex. He helped design the Vortex with Johan. So hopefully we'll be posting updates. Uh, uh, I'll try to take on the brunt of the force because I know he's really busy, but I want to be able to update you guys. Just like if you guys remember the laser beam, we, I was posting blogs every two weeks, every three weeks. It didn't matter if our boards were shit, if the prototype didn't come out the way we wanted to. We were posting updates, the good, the bad, the ugly. We want to get back to that, but we want to do it in video form uh, as well, because I know it's just much easier to watch a little video rather than read an entire uh, blog posts. Some people like reading, but also I think most people nowadays just rather watch a quick one, two, three minute video, uh, get the update and, ex and know exactly where the project is so that they can plan their purchases, their life, their projects and all that fun stuff. We don't want to leave you in the dark and then one day just be like, hey, laser's done. Here you go. Like we're going to, I'm going to take you guys through the entire journey. So the only, like this has also adds to 
um, our CO2 laser because this gives us our first le uh, level experience with designing uh, enclosures for CO2 lasers, right? Although the CO2 laser is more powerful, it's going to create more smoke. Uh, it's still essentially the same design. Certain things that I'm going to learn about designing this and actually building it and optimizing it for my space is going to help optimize it for you guys because I want to build a CO2 laser obviously with a, with a three-stage filter system, but I don't want you to come home and be like, hey, you know, you know when somebody owns a cat and you can come into their home and be like, this person owns a cat. I don't want you to be that person with your laser. I don't want somebody to come into your house and be like, hey, were you cooking, were you, were you making s'mores? Why does it smell like burnt wood? And some people love that smell. I love that smell. Always reminds me of s'mores, camping, fun stuff. But like we want the filtration and all the enclosure to be pretty air, like pretty solid so that, you know, you don't have to always be masking a smell of woodworking, whether you're, you're, an, you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of space and you're working in, in a home office, in an apartment, and you're venting out the window or in your basement, uh, or if you're lucky enough even to have a garage, um, we want it to be the best experience possible. So this is kind of uh, step one in even thinking and prototyping and playing with the idea of enclosed um, air, air exhaust. I know, exactly. It's hit or miss. So we want you to have the option of not pissing off your wife if she doesn't like the smell. We want you to have the option, you know, of having a great exhaust system for when you're working with your CO2 laser. Uh, and that's kind of my goal here. So that's kind of the third goal. So using it at home, using it at the trade show, and as well, getting my, dipping my toes in the, uh, in the enclosure uh, prototyping and research for a CO2 laser. So that's kind of threefold. So yeah, so right now we are also in talks with a, um, a testing company, just like with the laser beam. We wanna make sure that everything's FDA, um, the Canadian Red Act and the IEC in terms of laser, making sure we're all safe. We, we have everything that we need to do. We're filing with everybody who we need to file because that is a huge deal in terms of safety. And we don't wanna be putting out a product that doesn't reach the safety um, requirements for all the different bodies the Red Act for Canada lasers, um, the FDA for U.S. laser, and the IEC for international. Uh, we want to make sure, just like the laser beam, that we're up to the uh, we're up to snuff on all that stuff. So we're we're kind of in con we're starting our conversation now, so that we can even design from day one with um, um, the safety requirements in mind. Right? Last time it was kind of like we I designed a product, and then near the end we're like, oh wow, I forgot we we do have to make sure that this is good with all the governmental bodies of the places that we're shipping. And that was kind of a second step when it should have been from day one part of the process. So we're also going through that. And yeah, so that is the current update. And then as soon as we get your survey results and we start brainstorming, I think we'll be whipping up a uh, version one prototype, uh, a, a kind of MVP. It might not be pretty, but we want it to work very well and uh, kind of get our... Uh, start to start to think about what this thing could look like and how we want it to function. So I think uh, that is going to be for the next couple of weeks. Survey and email list is going to be coming to you very soon. Uh, we're going to be working on this enclosure. I'll probably continue to work on it in our next live stream, or at least I'll have uh, a more physical version. Plus the design will be more completed and we can go over that. And then um, I think once that gets started, we will start the design process of a first prototype. So, Guys, that's the update for the CO2 laser. You know the deal. My name is Ikenna Ofoha for CNC Labs. And whether it's morning, afternoon, evening or night, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. You all have a great night. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. And hopefully I'll catch you on Laser Beam Live number 30 in two weeks, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Follow our Instagram, follow our YouTube, check out our website, share with your friends, and like and share this video. Thank you very much. You guys have a good night.